Welcome back to the channel. If you're a returning viewer, I do appreciate it. If you're a first time viewer, welcome to my channel. Thank you for clicking on my content, giving me a chance. My name is Matt. This is Secondhand Home Theater, a home theater channel where I talk about various home theater topics, but I talk about it through the lens of buying not only used equipment, but high-end used equipment. And that is exactly what I'm talking about here today. And if you clicked on this video because of the title and the thumbnail, I am not lying to you. It may slightly be a clickbaity title. Maybe. I don't know. I guess that's for you guys to decide. But I'm not lying to you. The original MSRP of all my major equipment items that I have here in my home theater is over $50,000. But the catch with that is that it was like $50,000 in like 2009 or 2010. <laughs> so hopefully it's not a clickbait title and hopefully you guys don't click off this video. Uh, I hope you stick with me through this because here today, this is exactly the type of thing that I like talking about on this channel and is really the main reason why I started a channel like this. Today, I'm gonna talk to you guys just a little bit about some of the items here in my home theater and show you how much they cost originally when they first were released at MSRP uh, prices and what I actually paid for them and how you can really get some good deals out there on some older used high-end technology that may not be the most modern up-to-date thing, but you can definitely still get some quality value out of it. So anyways, stick with me. Don't click off the video now. Uh, I didn't mean to clickbait anybody, but let's talk about my $50,000 home theater uh, from like 2009. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, so we are gonna start out today talking about the JBL speakers behind me. I'm gonna talk about my projectors a little bit. And then I'm also gonna talk about something on my equipment rack. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail, hopefully. And I'm not gonna go through every single item here because I don't want this video to run too long uh, because I do have a tendency to ramble. But if you guys do like this video, maybe I'll keep doing uh, more of these videos uh, periodically talking about other items here in my home theater. But to start with today, the first set of items I'm gonna talk about are the speakers behind me, these JBL 8340A speakers. Now, I do have a video on these. It'll be linked up in the corner. It'll pop in here. Uh, if you wanna hear more detail about how I actually got in uh, to these speakers and the whole process of everything, click on that video. I'm not gonna go into all that here. But for the purposes of this video and what we're talking about, these speakers are from somewhere in the mid 90s. I tried to do a little research. The oldest post I could actually find on them was dated 2001. And even at that point, the guy who was making a post on this message board I found still talked about them being a little bit older speakers. So I'm guessing these had to have come around somewhere in like the early to mid 90s, give or take. Now, I do know these speakers are JBL brand. They are commercial speakers. They are made for commercial cinemas. And when I was growing up throughout the 90s and into the early to mid 2000s, every commercial cinema I went into, at least in the area I grew up in, I grew up in Chicago, and then I came down towards more of the central Illinois, St. Louis area when I went to college, every major cinema I went into, unless it was like an IMAX theater, had some version of these JBL speakers as their surround speakers uh, in those cinemas. And so because I'm trying to replicate real cinema quality audio and video here in my home theater, ultimately I thought, why not go straight to the source and just buy commercial grade speakers? These speakers and the various versions have always been on my end game list. And these speakers, the 8340As, were originally listed according to the 2001 post I could find because I couldn't find anything from JBL that listed the original MSRP. So I'm going on good faith that what was listed in this little uh, forum was correct. But going off of that, these speakers were roughly $1,100 a pair when they first came out because again, these are commercial grade cinema speakers. And when I bought them earlier this year, like six, seven months ago, I paid $70 for the pair. 
So I paid an extreme discount compared to what the original retail MSRP is. And honestly, these are the best surround speakers I've ever owned. I've had quite a few surround speakers uh, in my time here in my home theater. These are the best. They're commercial grade, high sensitivity. Uh, they don't dig super low on bass because that's not really what they're made for. They're made for the surround field. Uh, so they're not full range speakers by any means, but they have enough mid bass and stuff to give you enough you know, detail in the surround stage. They're actual THX certified speakers that were certified by THX and George Lucas uh, in the THX company to be authorized THX speakers that fit the specs of THX for the 90s and early 2000s when that was still really a thing. And so for me, these speakers are the best surround speakers I've ever owned. They're an end game item for me. I have no plans of getting rid of them unless for some reason they break and it's just not uh, cost effective to repair them. Then I may find another pair to replace them with. But after having these, I'm not going back to normal speakers, uh, even like dedicated home theater speakers. Commercial all the way for speakers is what I you know, want here in my home theater. And for the price that I paid $70 for these, uh, that's an extreme value and you're gonna be hard pressed to find quality surround speakers that can deliver like these for that price. So yeah, so the first item I wanted to talk about here in this video to talk about the extreme value uh, that I found here in my $50,000 home theater was this pair of JBL uh, Pro speakers. And next we're gonna move on just in a second, a small transition to the item sitting directly to uh, my left, which would be your right in the camera. And that's I'm gonna talk about some of these projectors I've got sitting up here. So hang on just one second. Now, full disclosure, uh, again, I'm not trying to deceive anyone. I don't wanna seem like I'm clickbaiting on my title, even though it might be that a little bit, I guess. But when I talk about the MSRP of all my home theater equipment, uh, that value I came up with, the uh, $50,000, which it's a little bit more than that. I think when I did all the math on a calculator, it's something like 53,000 or something like that, a little more specific. Anyways, but that $50,000 is definitely skewed and not just the fact that I'm talking about the value of items from like 15 plus years ago, but it's skewed because I have three home theater projectors as you can see behind me. So in that value, I added all three of the projectors together. So that heavily skewed the total gross amount of MSRP that I had, uh, you know, for the title and for kind of the basis of this video. That really adjusted the amount uh, because I'm counting them all together. Now, these three projectors, I'm gonna talk about them very briefly here. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail, but these are all older projectors for the most part. The newest one is actually one I've not done a video on, uh, the other two I have, and that's my Christie projector, which is, that one at the very end right there. Uh, that I'll talk about in a minute. My Null LED, which is this guy right here, this big one right here, and my Marantz VP11, which is that one right there. Those are both older projectors. The Null LED came out in 2010, and that one retailed for $15,000 when it first came out. This Marantz is even older. This one came out in 2007, and that one retailed for $20,000 when it first came out. So as you can tell right there in those two, that's $35,000 MSRP in projectors. And that really skews kind of the total amount of equipment I have here. The Null LED, 15 grand when it first came out. I bought it just about a year ago, uh, give or take at the time of recording this. I paid $500 for it. Uh, $500 is like $4.99 plus tax, so a little over $500 free shipping on eBay. So $500. This Moran's VP11. I actually bought two of those. Uh, if you check the video, that'll be linked up here. And uh, at the end of the video, I'll have a playlist of all my projector videos. You can definitely check that out. Uh, that one, I actually bought two because I bought one originally off a of Shop Goodwill that had a defective lens on it. And so I got rid of that one and bought this one off eBay. So I'm counting both those together and the, the actual you know amount I paid, and I bought a new lamp for that one. So I'm kind of grouping it all together. But when you put all that in together of the two units and the lamp, that was $350 for this one, for what would have been a $20,000 projector when it first came out. Uh, and if I was to subtract 
the broken one off of that, you're looking like 250 bucks, 275 bucks for just this and the lamp. Again, that's an extreme discount as compared to what it retailed for originally. Now, just briefly to talk about my Christie, because like I said, these two projectors, the Knoll LED, the Marantz, I've got videos on those. You can check those out for more detail. The Christie, I am in the process of watching content and doing stuff uh, on there to actually do a more in-depth review of that one. But that Christie is the newest piece of equipment probably here in my home theater out of everything. That came out in 2017, so it's still like, I don't know what, like eight years old, six, seven, eight years old, somewhere like that. But it is the newest. And honestly, out of the projectors I've owned, that was the cheapest <laughs> out of all of them at retail. That one was about $7,500 when it first came out, which is really kind of in line with a lot of modern dedicated home theater projectors. And that Christie projector real quick, cause I forgot to mention it. The actual model number is a Christie DWU 599GS. Uh, it's actually a 1610 format projector, not 169, but you can crop it down uh, and have really no ill effects of that. And it's a fixed installation projector. So it's made for venues, not really dedicated home theaters. So it's made for like educational buildings, museums, uh, event venues, stuff like that. Uh, but it does have a lot of cool features and specs that allow it to be a home theater projector, which is how I'm using it. Uh, but the big catch on that one, it's a laser projector. So it uses a laser as the light source. It's not a lamp-based projector. So it has a very high lumen output, uh, very vibrant colors, all that good stuff. But anyways, that was $7,500 when it came out originally. I paid $300 for that projector on eBay. I was able to negotiate with the seller on a best offer. I got it for like 150 bucks plus, I think it was like a hundred and something dollars shipping because it is pretty heavy and bulky. But yeah, so I paid approximately after tax and stuff like 300 bucks for that projector. So when you look at it, amongst all three of these projectors I have sitting here, and I'm not counting any of the other projectors I've purchased in the past and then sold, I'm just counting these three right now. That is roughly like a little over $40,000 or right around like $40,000 worth of MSRP in projectors in these three units. And I didn't even pay $1,000 or maybe I could say right at like $1,000 for all of those. So I paid an extreme fraction of the cost uh, that these were originally when they first came out. And again, same like my JBL speakers, they're not the newest thing. They're not the highest like resolution. They don't have all the cool bells and whistles of a lot of like modern dedicated home theater projectors. Okay, I get that. But the quality of the components and the picture quality that these projectors still produce for their age and for their limitations is extremely good. And you're gonna be very hard pressed for what I paid to find something better in price to performance ratio than any of these I have right here. That's talking about my projectors. Let's make another little hop, skip, and a jump transition over to my equipment rack. And I'm gonna talk about one more item before we finish this video out. Okay, so we've moved over to my equipment rack and we're gonna talk really quickly about my receiver that's sitting right here. Uh, and try not to mind the cables and stuff back there. I know, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing equipment rack that you're gonna find here on YouTube. Definitely something I probably need to work on later on down the line. But that's not what we're looking at. What we're looking at is right here. This is my Rotel RSX 1562 receiver. We're not really talking about the Emotiva processor that's sitting on top of it. That's a newer addition and that's something similar to my Christie projector. I'm gonna have a video dedicated to that coming out soon on the feed. But what we're looking at is the Rotel receiver. This is a dedicated home theater receiver that came out in 2012. And that receiver, when it first came out, the MSRP was $2,600, which is pretty comparable nowadays to some pretty good high-end receivers uh, that you can buy nowadays from like Denon and Marantz and different places. Uh, it may even be on the lower end compared to some really high quality like Emotivas and Outlaw and Macintosh and some of like those uh, processors and receivers. But anyways, that was, $2,600 in 2012 when it came out. 
I bought this one about a year ago, give or take, maybe a little more than a year ago, on eBay. It was another four parts uh, unit. I paid $100 for it and then took it to my local electronics guy here in town. It wouldn't turn on initially. He got the power supply fixed. Uh, fixed up some of the knobs and buttons that weren't working and whatever. He charged me $80 to fix it. So all in on that, I paid $180 for a $2,600 receiver. And up until just recently, when I got my Emotiva processor that's up here, uh, this has been the workhorse that's done everything. Now again, like all this other stuff, it doesn't have the greatest features and specs in comparison to what we have nowadays. Uh, it doesn't pass 4K, it's only a 1080p. It does have some HDMI ports, but they're only 1.3 uh, HDMI. It does have some other features uh, that are good, uh, but not great as in comparison. For example, the watts per channel is only 100 watts per channel. But the catch is this is a seven channel receiver it can do 100 watts with all seven channels driven, which a lot of even more modern receivers that are similar in uh, spec and price to this may be able to do that. They may exceed it nowadays a little bit, but a lot of receivers can only drive, say, 100 watts, 120, 140, 150 watts, whatever it is, with two channels driven. And then once you get into multi-channel uh, being kind of driven at the same time the wattage changes and that's going to happen regardless just based on the content coming out of each of the speakers and the power requirement of that it's a whole different topic but this receiver is able to drive 100 watts on all seven channels so while that may not seem like a lot when you look at specs of like other receivers that tout like 140 150 180 200 a channel those receivers don't always drive that level of wattage with all seven channels running. They may only do it with two channels. So for what it is, it's a really good receiver. And the only reason, outside of finding a really good deal, that I got the Emotiva processor that I'm using, because this is an older processor, it is several years newer than the Rotel. So it has uh, newer formats it can run. It has better just processing power, a better HDMI input. I believe it's like 1.4 HDMI versus 1.3. Uh, and I'm using now this Rotel receiver is a glorified power amplifier. I'm just running the multi-channel out of the Emotiva into the multi-channel in on the Rotel, and I'm bypassing all the processing and just using a direct audio source uh, multi-channel in on the Rotel to just get straight audio signal, straight wattage with no processing on there. And admittedly, on a side note, it's the best that my speakers have ever sounded. Uh, they're just much more rich, much more full, much more detailed uh, running it like that. But that's not the point of this video. The main point is this was a $2,600 receiver. I got it for 180 bucks all in. Again, in extreme value and an extreme uh, you know, bargain for what this is compared to what it originally cost in 2012. Uh, so with that, we're gonna wrap up the video. I'm just gonna transition one more time and we're gonna wrap up this video here today. So there you go. There's a handful of items from my home theater uh, just showing you what the retail MSRP was versus what I paid for them. Uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wasn't trying to be clickbaity. I wasn't really trying to lie or deceive anybody. Uh, really, if you look at the original MSRP value, I do have over $50,000 of items uh, and equipment here in my home theater. It's just from like 15 years ago, give or take. Uh, but anyways, I'm wrapping this video up. If you did enjoy the content here today, definitely leave a like uh, on the video. You know, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in what I'm doing. I really do appreciate it. Hit the bell notification. Do all that good YouTuber stuff that everyone always asks you to do. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, leave a comment down below if you like this, if you want to see me talk about some more of my equipment and what I paid versus what the original MSRP was. Definitely let me know uh, what some of the more expensive items are you guys have in your home theater and how much you paid for them. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. I will see you the next time in the next video right here on secondhand home theater. Thank you.